Researchers have developed a new way to detect consciousness in unconscious people and the same technique may be used for virtual reality. We'll talk about it. First off, spiking patterns in your brain are not mysterious. We can record them. When you're performing an action, your brain has pathways that will activate, and those same pathways activate when you're just imagining doing it. So if you describe to somebody who is unconscious, imagine yourself walking around your living room or playing tennis. You can see those areas of the brain light up, meaning there is an observer that's listening. This might also have consequences for people who were not supposed to be conscious, or no one knew that people were locked in, and that is very concerning. What does this have to do with virtual reality? Well, it may not be a one-way street. I do find it very entertaining that virtual reality is used for mice and mazes rather than just mazes, like it seems like an extra step, but it does keep them still so they can do better brain recording. Mice placed in virtual reality can have their brain activity recorded. It looks like this. They have a mouse running on a little sphere, and they have an environment where they learn to map a maze. Yes, mice will run around these little mazes, and in certain parts of the maze they'll get a reward or a punishment, and they begin behaving differently based on the location. You can induce those neural pathways, and the mouse will behave as though it's in a different location, meaning they believe they're in a different location just because their brain has said, hey, you're here. This means that memories can be implanted. You can change your behavior based on just what your brain is telling you. Not unlike when people have dementia and they believe they are somewhere entirely different. Future technology may be able to use these pathways in order to create scenarios in your brain in real time. So you might believe you're fighting a dragon in a cage just because you're wearing VR and it's stimulating your brain. Before you say it, I get it. Shocking your brain to make you believe you're somewhere else probably is not good for your brain. But hey, we do a lot of stuff that's not good for us. And while we're at it, I'm kind of jealous about mice getting to run in this cool little virtual world, even if they have like electrodes in their brain recording it. It does look like fun. Some have said we may be able to apply this kind of consciousness test to things like AIs or even other animals. If they're able to imagine they're at a location, they are considered conscious because they do have an internal world, internal maps. Consciousness being a perception of self, but it gets a little sketchy when we're talking about an internal experience of self. Having an internal mind is a little bit different from, say, a mouse versus a plant. No one can decide what consciousness really means, and even sentience has some pretty serious controversies on how you define something as sentient, and I firmly believe we will never decide that a robot is conscious, just because we're kind of, you know, a little bigoted about it. How can something have an internal world if it was programmed? I do think we'll be able to accomplish it if, you know, mankind makes it there. Mankind is, you know, kind of on the decline right now, and I do hope that we make conscious robots before the apocalypse.